as Mr. Jern. I'm gonna to talk to you today about principles of engineering 3.1.2, the basic outputs programming, distance learning version. And when you click here, you're gonna see a couple of things. The goals today is, well, first of all, you're going to want to have done 3.1.1. This builds directly off of that. It assumes some familiarity with um, the, 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 the programming uh, basics. And so if you didn't do that, you're gonna have a real tough time with this. Uh, just like last time, this is more experiential than just you know wrote uh, writing stuff down in your engineering no notebook. Um, you're gonna you're going to experience learning to program. It is a mindset uh, as much as anything else, and I highly encourage you to go slowly and really take each step to heart as you study this. It for for many of you, this is a brand new experience. Thinking like a programmer is different than thinking like a human, okay? So just keep all that in the back of your head as we go forward with this. Uh, so today, uh, for 3.1.2, you're going to develop an algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step process for solving a problem. Uh, you're going to analyze and describe an algorithm represented by a flowchart or as a programming code, okay? So we've already talked about flowcharts. You're gonna identify, test, and implement a possible solutions to a problem using a computer. So you might come up there's a, there's going to be lots of different ways to get the solution that you want uh and no we might all have different answers that's the, that's the nice thing about programming is you program however you want as long as it works uh, essentially i mean there's within boundaries within reason um the computer programs are used in many applications in our daily lives many many applications devices that are controlled by a processor are called outputs these devices have a variety of functions such as producing motion, light, and sound. In this activity, you're gonna use the VexCode VR to control these outputs. So you're gonna to wanna to click on the VexCode VR, and that's gonna bring you to hopefully a familiar looking site. Uh, this guy right here, you've been here before. And hopefully you've already, we, we've talked about flowcharts, we're gonna revisit them a little bit today. And you know, of course, here we are. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the Vexco VR for your procedure. You're gonna to wanna to see near the playground, click the monitor button to open up the monitor panel. That's in the upper right-hand corner here. Okay, there it is, monitor panel. I'm gonna get rid of this or move that off to the side. Actually, I'm gonna close it out for now. And actually, you know what? One thing you might wanna do is just go to file and just start over, new blocks project. Okay, I'm just gonna discard that because I don't need it. And now I could click on the monitor button to show the monitors sensors, variables, uh, a little bit of text down here. Um, so there we go. Review the following algorithm expression expressed in natural language. So what I wanna do is I wanna display the message hello world on two lines of output using two different colors of text. Okay, if you look over here, there's like a little rectangle, that's actually a cursor. In this area right here, you would see um, some lines of text. So this is where we're gonna put this. I keep flipping to the robot for a reason. We'll get to that later. Uh, so what we wanna do is I want to say hello world. I wanna say hello in one color, and below that I want to say world in another color. So um, in the looks section of VR, Vexo VR are three blocks whose actions can be abbreviated as print, set print color, and next line. Okay, so print, it sounds like it means send it to a printer and print it out on paper. But in programming, typically print means display. Okay, displayed on the screen. That's what print means, printed on the screen. Set the print color is just a command to change the color of the font on the screen. Next line is exactly what it sounds like. Move to the next line. You have to actually specify that. Otherwise, it'll just keep going on the same line forever. So using, here, let me show you what I mean. So over here under looks, where is the purple one? Oh, it's already there. So you can see these things are right here. Print, um, set the color of the, of the font, and then next row, okay? It makes a little sound when I do that. Let's see if I can be fancy here. Yeah, I went backwards, okay. Um, so think of what we wanna do. Think about these commands. And in your engineering notebook, write the pseudocode for this natural language. So this is a natural language, a human talk. I want to write it as a write it as pseudocode, meaning a 
list of simple commands using these commands. Okay, and I'll leave it. It's already hi, it was our. I guess I should have. Uh, yeah. So you can check your response there. Okay. Step five. You're going to create a um, program based on your pseudocode. You're going you're to actually do it. So you're going to select playground and use the grid map playground to sh uh, that's shown in the drop down menu. Click play to test your program. Observe that the printed output appears in the lower section of the monitor panel. Okay. Let me show you what I mean. What it means. So you can. Um, you're gonna just drag stuff out. Let's just say I say print hello and I don't give it any other detail. I'll just leave it as it is. When I press play up here, oh wait, actually playground. I'm gonna click playground. And yours might still be in the castle, castle crashers. Um, if that's the case, move it up to grid map. Okay, just let it go. And we could press uh, play. And so over here it says hello. This is what it's talking about in the monitor panel. You're gonna see it says hello because I just dragged out hello just as it is and I just put it there boom done okay we stop the program so that's what it's talking about in that in that in the step okay but you don't want to say just hello you want to say hello world in two different colors okay and um, let's see are the colors specified I don't think they're specified but you could make two different colors or whatever you want it tells you here how to undo a mistake Okay, nice and easy because you will make mistakes. Trust me. You don't want to just scratch the whole thing. So make sure you read this carefully. Okay, part one. That was an introduction. Part one. Planning the algorithm. You're going to design an algorithm that displays this specific message every time you run the program. You want it to look like this. Black text, red text, green text. Okay, you want to say these things. And... Um, so in your notebook, create the pseudocode for the program. You just did it, so uh, you know in the introduction. So now expand that. How are you going to make this happen? After you created the pseudocode, you wrote down your engineering notebook. Go ahead and write your program. Okay. Um, before you run your program, though, you're going to need to click the clear button in the lower section of the monitor. So mine is a little bit um, cut off down here, so I apologize about that, but I'm gonna click clear, it gets rid of the hello, it'll get rid of your hello world, and so it'll start with a blank slate, okay? Um, so you the in addition to the play and reset button in the playground, uh, you know, use these to run your program. So it just kind of like gives you a little bit of, uh, these are where the control buttons are. Um, so listen, every time you, you don't have to open the playground, you can hide this window um, out of the way as you, so you could click the hide button, uh, where'd that go? Right here, you could, you could hide the playground if you want, if it gets in your way, which it often does, because well, it just does, because it's big and it takes up a lot of room. Test and debug your code until your output matches the output in figure two. Figure two being this, okay, you want it to look just like that, these colors and everything. Um, and you can uh, get this output repeatedly only clicking. Yeah, okay. So you, you, here's a hint. Okay, just check it out. You want it to look like the, the picture in figure two. When you're done testing and it looks how it does or how you want it to look, okay, how it's required to look, you're going to want to save your file, okay? And it says how to do it right here. Save to your device, click on file, save to your device, and I have, um, you're going to want to rename your, don't, don't name it Vexcode Project. You're going to want to rename it, okay? And I give you directions in the instructions on what to name it and how. So check that out. Make sure you name it correctly because there's going to be two more things to, to save and you don't want to mix up your files and you want to get full credit for this, right? So naming a file is, is, is important. It's an important part of the process of learning the program. Okay, that's part one. Part two, snail driving. So this is where we're going to get into the flowcharts a little bit okay so um step 10 is learn about flowcharts so you can click through this make sure you read it maybe take some notes okay and you can see how it talks about ooh, flow chart mm, there we go flow chart pseudocode and then it's going to get into an example that you've already seen so just review that okay you can see how many there are down here okay, when you get to the end like I said, we already talked through this a little bit, so. But there are some new things, so make sure you read through those. Check your knowledge. There's two questions. 
okay Seri uh, okay now there's nothing to write here you can jot down notes from this but do this you're only cheating yourself if you don't do it i know you just want to get through this assignment hopefully that's not it though hopefully you're learning and you're excited about this because this is this is game changing for you you can learn how to program that opens up so many doors for you so do the check your knowledge i'm not going to require that you write it in your engineering notebook at this time uh but but do that so in your next program you're going to use the outputs of the drivetrain okay if you remember the drivetrain um that's at the top here yeah drivetrain so you're going to use those uh to and and the the pen okay the vs vrsdb pen. so if you remember the little robot here has a pen you might have been wondering what the pen is for well now you're going to find out it actually can write on something think of it like a, a whiteboard pen it's going to write on the ground it's going to write on the floor so in this case it's going to write like a little square it, it wrote it in this color you could change the color it's a it's a it's a electronic pen you could change it to whatever you want it to be okay so you're going to have it draw a shape you're going to have it draw a square in the playground okay first though complete a flow chart of your program then you're going to create an algorithm okay step by step you, you can't just rush into this you really do have to take your time and when you do that things become a lot easier because you you've gone the steps you're not trying to jump ahead to the end okay take the steps that are required and you'll get through this so when you're flow charting you can abbreviate or generalize some details of the program uh, for example uh, you can specify move to a square or something similar instead of saying the exact distance you know just as long as it makes sense you're good step 12 in your notebook create a flow chart for your program answer the questions below to help get you started okay so first answer these questions answer yeah this question there's only one this will help you make the flow chart okay a little bit about flow charts versus pseudocode flow charts are sort of a um a little bit closer to natural language pseudocode is a little bit closer to the programming language uh, both are useful uh, both they help you conceptualize what you're going to have the robot do and uh, helps you kind of get from human natural language into programming language so and they both have their uses um, so you have created a flowchart now and what do you want it to do well maybe it wasn't super clear you want the the robot to make this square here okay that's what you want it to do um so this is what this is going to help you with okay so you're going to make a brand new file if you haven't yet okay make another one because you've already saved the one you want to make a new one you don't want to write overwrite your old one that you just saved and sent to me uh open up the playground again okay it should be a map grid or grid map if it's not go ahead and change the map back to grid map um if the monitor is open you can close it okay what i mean by that is this thing is still open over on the right so i'm going to click the little arrow over here to shut it down because it gets in the way all these little things do this thing i probably want to unhide and show because okay, i want to draw a square right about there so create your program so you have the flow chart now you're going to actually create the program um it tells you each each square is about 200 by 200 millimeters so you could tell the robot exactly how far to move um you need to create the square exactly where it's shown in figure six but it can be any color so in figure six up here the square has to be down here exactly right here uh, but it doesn't have to be green <laughs> you can make it green you can make it any color you want okay uh the end position of the robot does is not important but it can't be sitting on the square so move it away from the square okay don't just have it end and be like oh, i made a square nope get it away from there and uh doesn't matter where though here's the key here's a, here's the thing program a few blocks at a time okay don't write the entire algorithm all at once see if you could get it to move to the starting spot check it make sure it goes then right then make the code to make it draw the first side of the square make sure it works then add the next next side of the square make sure it works then you know so don't try to do it all at once because if it doesn't work you're gonna have a hard time fixing it or a harder time fixing it so try a little bit at a time keep in mind there's a duplicate duplicate feature where you can just uh duplicate 
text or blocks of code so you don't have to redrag everything out. Test and debug it until you get the, the final solution, the, the little, little, little square in the, in the bottom left corner there. Okay. When you're done, you're gonna to wanna to save this as well. I have how to save it and what to call it in the directions. Make sure you follow that when, when, before you attach it to uh, uh, the assignment. Part three, okay, this is the final part. When programming with inputs such as sensors, it sometimes helps to know exactly what is happening with the inputs as the program progresses. So we're focusing on outputs, but it's important to know what's going on with the inputs. In the Vexco VR, you can get a sensor's values to help you track why some programs behave the way they do. For example, you can get a robot's exact X and Y location on the grid, okay, the coordinates. So step 17, in your engineering notebook, write a flow chart to move the robot square by square to all four corners of the grid map, reporting its X and Y position at each corner. You can use an abbreviation, move the robot n number of squares, so you know five squares, six squares, seven squares, whatever how many squares it takes to move more than one square in the same direction. That's step 17, another flow chart, okay? Flow chart, okay? It could be, remember this is closer to natural language. You don't have to write in robot code yet. 18, add a print block to output the position in millimeters. Okay, it'll look just like this. The position block is, and you can change X to, you know, change it X or Y. It's in the sensing section, it's in the purple section. You're gonna need both X and Y position to report the coordinates of the grid. Don't forget the comma. Don't forget the comma. How are you gonna add that comma? Okay. Just add the comma, make sure. All right. You can make it say, look, uh, the robot is at position, this position. You, just, you know, make it as fancy as you want, but make sure that it's readable. Add helpful output to identify all four corners using messages such as top left corner, because that's what I was just getting at. So add messages to make it clear. Document the X and Y location of the four corners of the grid map. Again, remember, add the comma. <laughs> Download and share my program and monitor outputs as directed by me, your teacher. Okay, so once again, that's the third thing you're going to have to save. Make sure you follow the directions on how to save it and submit it. And then finally, answer these conclusion questions in your engineering notebook, and that's about it. All right, now you're, you're bound to get stuck. You're bound to get frustrated. That's a natural thing. That's a normal thing, and it's okay. Get through it, power through it. Ask for help. Ask for assistance, okay? Take breaks. Not too many breaks, but take breaks. You'll get this, and it's gonna be amazing. Take care.